Hey guys, welcome to All the Tronics. I'm Gregory, and in this video, we are going to see how this IQ baseband speech processor works. I designed this speech processor using an AVR microcontroller, and you're gonna understand how the DSP is done, how the input audio becomes two IQ quadrature signals, and you're gonna take a look on the hardware. Take your coffee and come with me. The input speech signal enters this connection. It goes through an input amplifier that also works as an anti-aliasing filter. Signal goes to the AD converter and I'm using two PWM signals as digital to analog converters using two reconstruction filters running in this op amp here. In the output we have I and Q signals where the input speech frequency signal is centered at zero hertz. Let's see how it works. Before we go to the whiteboard we need to understand what's the behavior of the circuit. This circuit will sample the speech signal and will down convert the signal to a zero IF signal. It will generate the analytical representation of the input spectrum. This means that we need to have two output signals that in the real world are real signals but from the mathematical perspective one signal is the real component and the other signal is the quadrature component, is the imaginary component that together compose the analytical representation of a signal. This analytical signal, this analytical output will be centered at 0 Hz and as the input signal spans from 0 to 4 kHz, the main frequencies of a speech, of voice, the output will span a bandwidth from negative 2 kHz to positive 2 kHz. The quadrature signals can be used to modulate a quadrature up converter to generate single sideband transmission mission in a direct 0 IF up conversion. Let's go to the whiteboard. So guys, the main idea here is that we have a speech signal in the input, a voice signal. Here we have a microphone. This is a mechanical to electrical transducer where the mechanical waves of the voice are transformed in electrical waves and this electrical signal has its main power from 0 to 4 kilohertz. The human voice has a substantial amount of energy from 0 to 4 kilohertz. This electrical signal enters the speech processor and the speech processor generates two signals, an in-phase signal and a quadrature signal, I and Q signals. The I and Q signals compose an analytical representation of the input signal. An analytical representation signal equals I plus JQ is an imaginary number that can represent negative frequency and this is needed to compose a 0 IF baseband signal. What this means guys? This means that we're gonna down convert the 0 to 4 kilohertz input spectrum centering it at 0 hertz. So the output spectrum of this imaginary signal generated by an I and Q component spans from negative 2 kilohertz to plus 2 kilohertz. So this information is down converted to a 0 IF. This is a real 0 IF baseband signal and this is a very useful representation of a signal because it can be forward used to generate single sideband transmission using only a quadrature up converter. One way to transform a real signal into an analytical representation is to copy the signal to the I component and to delay by 90 degrees the signal and use it as the Q component. This will generate a vector in the imaginary plane. So the vector will be generated. Of course guys, because you have the same signal, but one of them is phase shifted to 9 degrees. So if we have a sine here, we have a sine here and a cosine here. If you have a cosine here, we have a a cosine here and a negative sign here. We have sine to cosine transformations and we have a vector here that can rotate in the imaginary plane and it also can rotate in the other direction. So in this plane here we can represent negative frequencies because now the derivative of the phase, the derivative of the phase can be negative or positive and this is only possible if we have a quadrature plane where the signal is represented. But if we have a 0 to 4 kilohertz signal, we're gonna have here a 0 to 4 kilohertz signal and also here we're gonna have a 0 
to 4 kilohertz signal of course but now that we have the but now that we have the i and q components we can down convert the signal to a zero if so now we can place a down converter after i and q to shift the signal to kilohertz and this down conversion is possible without aliasing because actually this representation here the analytical representation does not have negative frequency component this is clear here guys if we use this setup here this transformation this vector will only rotate to one direction to the positive direction and it doesn't matter what signal we put here on the input it will always rotate to the same direction so in this plane here we only have positive frequencies this means guys that doing this transformation we are actually filtering all the negative components of the input frequency this transformation is actually a filter that only pass positive frequencies and this is very clear looking to the vector this input signal actually has negative frequencies because any real signal has its frequency components mirrored to the negative side and a parenthesis here guys why why it's mirrored guys because if we have only one point of view of a real signal a real signal has only q or only i okay so a real signal, we only see the signal going up or, do or down or the signal going left, right, right, left. Oops, left, right, left, right, left, right. So with a real signal, we cannot know if the frequency is positive or negative. We cannot know. We only can see the signal going up or down, up or down or left, right, left, right. This is why the frequency representation of a real signal has the frequency components mirrored because the universe do not let us understand if the frequency positive or negative now that we generated an analytical representation we have the vector form and you can clearly see that the signal is rotating to a positive direction so this signal here guys signal equals i plus jq only have positive components and now it's very clear to see that we can downshift the signal two kilohertz to center it here using a down conversion step without generating any aliasing because the space here of negative frequencies is empty we can down convert the signal okay so how can we down convert the signal guys i will redraw this step here do you remember how we can rotate a vector let's remember the math classes at school if we have a vector we can apply a rotation matrix so if we have a vector we can rotate the vector by a non angle if we apply a vector rotation this is x hat y hat and the new x y position of the vector is x equal x hat times cos minus y hat time and the new y y hat cos plus x hat times sine and of course cos and sine are cos and sine of theta so this is the classical rotation matrix of a vector and this is actually implemented on quadrature up and down converters inside your smartphone inside your wi-fi router this formula is implemented using four mixers we need four mixers because we need four multiplications to down convert by two 2 kilohertz we need to generate a cos and sine signal of 2 kilohertz so this is pretty beautiful guys this is pretty beautiful let's implement this formula here this vector rotation on the signal path we first apply the signal to the first mixer and to the second mixers we need to add the signals together here and here we need to subtract the signals so this is y hat q hat and this is the new i and the new q signal and we have two more mixers here and here where the i hat signal goes to this mixer here and the q hat signal goes to this mixer here this is added here and this subtracts here now we only need a two kilohertz quadrature generator we generate two kilohertz here and we have cos and sign the cos signal enters this mixer here and this mixer here and the sign signal enters this mixer here and this mixer here guys this is vector rotation we implemented the formula x equal x hat times cos minus times sign equals y hat times cos x hat times sign this quadrature mixer here is actually this vector ro rotation here now we have the if down converted signal here guys if the spectrum here 
is this signal here at the output it is down converted by 2 kilohertz so here we have the zero if signal from negative 2 to plus 2 kilohertz because this signal here is down converted 2 kilohertz centering it at zero if so let's recap the topology we have the real speech signal we generate the analytical representation of the signal and now we down convert the signal using a quadrature down converter you can see that only what matters here is the difference between i hat and q hat and actually the signal is equal the amplitude of the signal is equal but the q hat is delayed by nine degrees so the only difference here is between i and q is a difference of nine degrees and actually we can generate a nine degrees difference using a positive 45 degrees lead here and a 45 degrees lag here we can advance by 45 degrees the upper signal to generate i and we can delay by 45 degrees the bottom signal to generate q hat this is a pretty common way of doing this a pretty common way the technique i use it here another different approach and references for this approach is here on the description of the video what i'm actually using here is a cascade of first order outpass filters so we have here four outpass filters in cascade on the upper arm and four outpass filters in cascade on the bottom arm an outpass filter is a filter that only changes the phase of the signal and will not change the amplitude and this is exactly what we need to generate here we don't want to change the amplitude of the signal we only need to change the phase of the signal and actually we only need to change the relative phase between i hat and q hat so actually the absolute phase here and the absolute phase here guys doesn't matter phase here and here has actually a pretty strange behavior but when we look in the relative phase between i hat and q hat so if we subtract any two points between the two graphs if we subtract this point from this point or let's say here this point from this point here the difference the relative phase will generate a pretty constant nine degree shift a pretty constant nine degree shift very interesting from the hardware perspective we have an input low pass anti-aliasing filter and two low pass reconstruction filters and here i'm using two pwm signals to generate digital to analog conversion using the avr chip so here we have the input it goes to a low pass filter is a four order filter this is hardware okay guys this is an op amp on the hardware on the pcb here we add of 2.5 volts that centers the signal because here we have a signal that has positive and negative values and we need to center the signal at half the ad the analog to digital converter range so this signal here is shifted up shifted up here and low pass filtered and it goes to the ad of the avr and the avr generates two pwm signals the two pwm signals so the output harder the output harder have two low pass reconstruction filters second order actually it's third order is a cell and key plus one pole filter cell and key plus one pole filter output i and output q signal well guys i know this video is pretty long so probably i will record a new video showing the results showing the circuit board working on the bench i'm gonna show the vector rotating with different input signals if you'd like to see a new video about this board showing the results in the bench leave a comment so i know you like it all the pcb files and the firmware the dsp c firmware is available on patreon and if you are not a patron of the channel you can support the channel become a patron helping me bring more videos like this and also having access to all the files of the projects well guys i hope you enjoyed this video if so please subscribe to the channel give it a thumbs up send to all your favorite friends and i see you in the next video of all electronics